Okay, great. Hi, this is Donna Ashton with the Waldorf Connection, and I'm so excited to welcome you to my call, How to Bring Waldorf Living and Learning to Your Young Child. So I just wanted to pop on here and welcome you first, and then we're going to move over to the slideshow, but I just wanted to say hi so you can see who was, was talking behind this. So I want you just to take a moment, close your eyes, take a deep breath, Wherever you are in your day or evening, maybe you're running around after your kids or you've been doing some things. So I just want you to take a deep breath, take a, or take a few breaths and just give yourself this time to really dig into the learning and what I'm going to be bringing you um, in this workshop today. So I'm gonna switch on over to the Pause that, and I'm gonna share my screen here. That's gonna be lovely, where's my, here we go. <laughs> okay, great, hopefully you guys can see this okay. So, um, okay, we're just gonna pop on over here because I have a lot to, to cover and I'm really going to, take, to do my best to give you as much as I can during this time together and still give you tons of information because the purpose of this class is to really share with you what it means to bring Waldorf to a young child, what that looks like, how you can help foster it, the keys to really creating this magical um, environment and lifestyle and, and homeschool for your child so that they can experience um, all of that and really thrive. And I'm gonna to try to give you as much as I can with some extra tips along the way. So you might be on this workshop for one or two of three reasons here. Either you're thinking of using Waldorf but you don't know how to get started, or maybe you've started or you've tried to kind of get started <laughs> with this Waldorf, Waldorf inspired environment and you just don't know how to do it, you don't have a clear step or a path to follow, you're really just not sure how to put it all together, or you do have a little bit of experience with it, but it's not shaping up the way that you like it or you just really need some more guidance. So whichever category you fall into, you're in the right place because what I'm gonna share with you today will help you move forward no matter where you're starting from and that's the good news. <laughs> so I wanna remind you the call is going to be recorded so um, if you need to jump off, you'll be able to access the recording. However, it's really preferable to stay here with me as I've got some important announcements I'm gonna give you at the end and you will benefit from them first. So, all right, let's kind of move on. Again, I'm Donna Ashton, so some of you may know me, may have been around the Waldorf Connection for a while, or maybe you may are maybe brand new to me. So I'm gonna just give you a little um, introduction into myself, and I just have so much experience to share with you as I have been basically living this Waldorf lifestyle, um, and ho I homeschooled my children way, starting way back in 2006, which seems like a really long time ago now. <laughs> And I definitely have lived through working out all the pieces of this puzzle that we'll be discussing here. And I am a mom of twin girls who are now 15 and a half. I can't believe it. But we found Waldorf when they were about three and a half. Um, I've been advising moms since 2010 in my business. I've been studying and training with experts and teachers and creating training courses and programs to be the best, most effective for all of you to benefit from what I've learned from over the years, right? I've taken everything that I have learned, all my mistakes, all my successes, and I've put them into my training program so that it kind of gives you those, the shortcuts and helps you avoid some of those pitfalls. And we're gonna be talking about some of those mistakes coming up later on. Honestly, I never expected that I would be a homeschooling advisor or a coach or honestly, I, I never even heard of Waldorf until, not, until 2005 and I grew up in a regular suburban type family. I went to public school and I really was pretty mainstream as I would classify it today. So I wasn't raised on a farm or in some kind of Waldorf inspired environment. So if you're just coming to Waldorf and you have a lot of questions, you don't really know what it is, 
it's gotten a lot more popular <laughs> over the last few years than even when I got started. But when I started, a lot of these concepts seemed like kind of foreign and just kind of like, you know, just so much so different from what I grew up with that I, I totally know exactly where you are if you're going through that. I went through that again, like I said, just a few short years ago. And I spent the first few years researching, making mistakes, you know, again, trial and error, trying to put all this together. But really back then there was nothing online, basically nothing. And it was really hard to imagine all the things that I was reading about. Never mind how I was supposed to bring it back with my girls. I did not know what I was doing, <laughs> but my passion was there and my conviction was there that this was the right way for my children to be educated and I was determined to make it work. So that's when I started the Waldorf Connection around the beginning of 2010. I created that website because I knew I couldn't be the only one out there who needed this training and guidance on their journey. So when I had been working with moms, um, maybe like you who are just getting started, I, I began to realize that I had a system and some of the key steps that had to be put into place to really make this work. And it may seem at odds for the way Waldorf works as you, know, you may have heard that it's very organic and you have to kind of bring this magic and all of this, but, um, but really you do bring a lot of yourself into the mix, but not without a clear plan, especially at the beginning. And that's what I really want to that's who I really love working with is those who are just getting started. So, um, because I find that's when they need the most help because at the beginning it can be very hard, very overwhelming, and not to mention extremely time consuming. And again, I know from experience, I spent hours and hours, months and years, honestly, perusing through books and blogs, trying to fit pieces together. And then when I did get something, it didn't really fit my style or it felt too hodgepodgey. So I've been teaching training courses since 2011. I did a live event in 2012 and again in 2015. And I've had hundreds and actually now thousands of families go through my trainings. I don't know the exact numbers, <laughs> but um, really just thousands of people have going through my training program. So this form of education is really growing so fast and being embraced due to all the reasons that we see out there with public schools, just the way the educational system is set up in general, the pushing academics, the scary, you know, people being in school with shootings and things. So not just in the US, but all over the world. And the chances are, if you're here, that you want something different for your child. You've seen a bit about Waldorf and you feel it's the right fit for you or you're hoping it is and you just wanna move forward. And it really is a truly amazing foundation to offer for your child and it's totally possible when you know what you're doing and you make that commitment to learn what is necessary to bring that magic um, to your family. So um, here's a picture of me with my Waldorf homeschool handbook that I released back in 2014. And again, I've worked with many moms privately to set up their homeschools through my courses and through live events, um, really understanding this whole concept of living and learning with Waldorf. Um, so really um, what, I have, what I have discovered is that there are a few key components into making this really work. And that's what we're gonna dive into today. And today I'm also going to be talking about my School for All Seasons course, which I am reopening enrollment in, and we'll get to that in a little while. So let's move on to our content here. So this is something you may or may not have thought about, but I want you to just take a moment and really just, you know, Think what is really important to you about this holistic education? Why is it that, why do you want this for your child? You know, why are you really looking to bring this? What is the reason behind? And, you know, there may be a, a whole bunch of different reasons. <laughs> and um, here are some of the main ones that I have received back when I have asked in surveys and asked my community. You really, what I have seen is that you guys really want this holistic education that nourishes your child's body, mind, and spirit. You want a gentle education that lets your child unfold naturally, right? No pushing, really just lets them be a child. You want connection with nature and the seasons, and you want exposure to music, art, and movement. And another really big reason and thing that we have seen this, this trend that's happened over the last 10 to 15 years is the current education trend of early grade burnout, where children are really 
um, losing that chance to have those playtime. Even these young kids are going to school, first grade, second grade, and maybe even earlier and coming home with homework like they spend all day at school and then they come they come home they have homework to do or they have sports activities that they have to rush around to and there's no free time for them just to play and really have that um, that time to be a child so there are so many studies out there and I would love for you guys to look further into this if you feel that you need it for yourself or for your spouse or other people in, in your family. Um, if you're getting a little bit of, of friction as you move down this holistic um, you know, pathway, playful learning is so much more effective for children to learn. So learning through play, um, is so effective. So even when your child is playing, they are learning so many things. So here is a, a quote from Dr. Katherine hirsch Pasak: Guided play advances cognitive skills like language, reading, math, as well as social skills like emotional regu emotion regulation. So you might think your child is just out there, you know, climbing a tree or playing in mud puddle or playing dress up, but they're really learning some amazing skills that they need to learn in order to regulate and to, you know, kind of just be um, fit into society and, and so many different things. Um, <laughs> I could go on and on. we could do an entire, you know, class all about the importance of play, but just know that it is really important. And one big thing I want to bring in is that the timing of this is so important. So you may have heard about this zero to seven age range in which really it's sort of creating this foundation for your child that's setting them up for the rest of their lives. Like what they learn in the zero to seven range um, sticks with them for the rest of their lives. And there's this window of opportunity that we have to bring, you know, these amazing things to them so that we can help them later in life, not try to cram academics and force them to do things that their brain and their body is not ready to do, but allow them this gentle, nourishing environment in which to unfold and learn and then build upon those things in later academics. So here are just some of the benefits um, of creating this foundation. They have the love, warmth, and a nourishment, nourishing environment. Caring, They learn to care for the environment by playing outdoors. They are creative, artistic. They have an amazing um, imagination. They have imaginative play. They imitate what you're doing. Protection of their childhood. Really, this is what this is all about, is to let them be a child and let them have that time. Um, gratitude, reverence, and wonder for what's around them, and joy, humor, and happiness. So all these things really creates the foundation and, and moves them towards building this. And there's such a short window there of time. So that's really who I'm speaking to here. And if you have a child that's like, you know, zero to six, basically I'm talking to you about this. So um, one of the um, moms who went through my School for All Seasons program um, says, thank you for reminding me how significant this work is because when I look into the eyes of my young child, I see so much. So it's so true, you know, we just, we get busy in our day-to-day -day lives, but if we kind of take a step back, which is what you're doing here today, and really look at why we're doing this, you know, how important is this, then we can see that it is very important in, in, your, in the life of your child, because you're giving them a gift, a gift of, of childhood, really, and of being able to um, unfold in this natural, gentle way. Okay, so let's kind of jump right into the four keys to bringing Waldorf living and learning. And these are the keys I was talking about that after a while I figured out that these are some key components that really make a difference and really set your child up with that foundation so that they can, again, kind of build on that later on for when they move into the grades and have academics and more higher learning. But these are the important keys during this early childhood time. So the first one is to create the foundation. And we started talking about this because this is what you're going to build on, right? And just like any building or thing of blocks, if you don't have a stable foundation, it can fall and crumble down. So we want to create something that's stable, that gives them all the 
all of the, um, the benefits and you know, really gives them a good springboard on for the rest of their lives. So let's talk first about environment, because when I think of the foundation, the very first thing I think about is their environment, which is where they spend the most time, which is most likely your home, right? So the home, we want to create this warm, nourishing, protected environment. Now, you may have heard about this Waldorf bubble, and you know, they have to get out there in the real world and experience things, but they don't need to do that when they're four, or they're six, or they're two. There's plenty of time for learning about the real life and understanding, you know, the horrors or whatever that's going on there. But right now, that's not what we're trying to bring them. We're trying to bring them safety and security and um, let them feel loved and, and just have that during this time. Um, and I'm not going to get into too much about the, the development of... Um, you know, Steiner's um, seven year cycles, but that zero to seven is that time where they're learning through their bodies and they're not able to um, filter things as we do when we get older, um, moving into really more until they're 14. Like some of those things that we could, ex you know, expose them to, you know, adult conversations, the news, scary things like that. They're not, they're unable to filter it out and they, um, you know, could cause nightmares and, and a lot of other things. So we want to create this protect, protecting, you know, protective, um, warm environment around them. So the home inside and out should be a haven for them um, for playing, you know, for to, to have a clutter-free environment where they could play inside and even if you live in a place that has a small, you know, maybe you live in an apartment, you don't have a backyard, or um, maybe there's a park nearby, but have some sort of outdoor space, even if it's a patio or a small space, for them to get outside into nature. And if you can't do something in your backyard, perhaps there's a, like I said, a park or something you could walk to, and really give them a time to be a child while exploring. Because, you know, you've seen young children, like they just look at everything in wonder. Everything is brand new to them. And it's like, a, it's like years of discovering, like, oh my gosh, what's this? What's this, right? They're running around looking at things, rocks and sticks and acorns and flowers. They wanna learn how things feel and touch and smell. And this is the time that they need the freedom to do that. Um, also, like I was saying before, and I can't get into this too much today, but I can, you know, we can, uh, I can answer a few questions. Try as much as possible to be as media free as possible when it comes to these younger children. Again, like I was saying, they can't filter things out. And more and more phones and iPads and all of that are more prevalent, even more than it was when my kids were younger. Every year it gets harder and harder to, you know, to keep the media and phones away from young children, but if at all possible, if you are using something, you know, hopefully it's like Netflix or something that you can monitor and know what's actually on there and they're not getting, um, you know, kind of free for all on the media. So be very discerning. The younger the child, the less this should be happening and the less freedom they should have when it comes to media. All right, I know we could talk about that forever. Let's move on a little bit. And we're gonna move into child development. And this is, again, I'm talking about this first seven year cycle. So you really need to understand where, you know, where your child is, what their consciousness is, what is it like for them? Because they have a different level of conscious than we do. And they really move through these seven year cycles. And I have so seen this. Now that my, you know, my girls are 15, it's amazing to see you know, where they were in this early childhood, and then they moved into that seven to 14 um, range, which they've been in for, a, you know, a, a long time, and really since most of the time that I was homeschooling, and now they, they're moving into the 14 to 21, where they're starting to have more intellectual and rational thoughts. But your child at this age doesn't have rational thoughts and can't think you know, understand things like, why did you do that? And I better not do this because if I do this, this is going to happen. They're at a total different level of consciousness and they don't remember a lot of things. Like memory doesn't even start coming in till around seven, long-term memory. Now I know my kids do remember some things, of course, from that time when they were young, but not that many things. Things fade for them. So they're in this hazy dreamlike state and they're learning through their body, like I said, through movement, and their main 
job is to play and move and learn through their bodies. And so it's up to us to create this backdrop or this, you know, environment that allows them the time to do this. So having a good rhythm set up, um, giving them, again, understanding their development and where they are will help. And um, they're going through these, what's called the lower senses. And if you have been around Waldorf at all, you may have heard about the 12 senses. And I was like, 12 senses? I thought there was five senses. <laughs> but um, according to Rudolf Steiner, there is more. And so these lower senses are seen in the will forces. And they are unconscious and they manifest in the metabolic or limbic system. And these include the sense of touch, which we experience through the skin, right? What's inside of me, what's outside of me. Um, the sense of life, which is also called the sense of well-being. And this is such things as if you're tired or thirsty or hungry. Um, it's understanding kind of the way you feel and your sense of well-being. The sense of self-movement. And this sense encompasses the ability to move and hold back through movement. Childhood games that involve starting and stopping can also, you know, can affect this sense. And then the sense of balance. It's not only the ability to balance the body, but also refers to the balance of life and being able to be centered, which goes back to rhythm and the area of the in and out breath. So we talk in depth about these senses um, in the School for All Seasons course, basically having the understanding of where your child is at their time of development and really how to nurture it. It makes all the difference. It really changes your perspective on how to parent and how to teach and just how to talk with and communicate with your child if you understand where they're coming from and that the things that you're asking them, you're probably asking too much. They're not at a place that they can actually do that, even though it sometimes seems like they can. All right, let's move on to toys and creative play, a really fun thing and probably a lot of what attracted you to, to Waldorf, like seeing all the beautiful toys, these wooden toys. So you wanna keep your toys natural as possible with natural materials like, the, like wood and silk and um, even like natural right from the outdoors. We used a lot of nuts and acorns and the tree blocks and sticks and shells. We live, because we live near the beach, like natural materials, anything that could be made out of natural materials is really highly recommended. And we wanna keep, the younger the child, the more this pertains to them rounded edges if you see in the picture here everything is sort of rounded on the toys there's nothing pointy or or that where they're going to get stuck or hurt and you that warm feeling if you've ever used these wooden toys or picked them up you can totally feel um, how amazing they are to play with and if you take this versus something pointy and hard and plastic that you know could easily be ripped or could poke out an eye <laughs> Um, you can see the difference, and I had this when I was learning to knit. I had some plastic needles, because I had no idea, and I bought this knitting kit from, I don't know, the local craft store or something, and I started learning to knit, and I thought, I just couldn't get it, and then I went to a knitting store, and someone recommended these bamboo needles or wooden needles, and I decided to use these, and I thought, oh my gosh, they felt so amazing in my hands, and I thought, I, I never went back to the plastic or even the metal again, because I loved the feel of the wood and the yarn, and I thought, wow, if this feels great for me, you know, it must feel to something similar. Of course, my kids aren't going, oh, these toys feel so smooth and warm, but they just know they like to play with them, right? And we wanna move through some, uh, bring to them open-ended toys. Things that can be more than one thing, for instance, like acorns or shells or nuts, or it could be food or money or whatever. <laughs> the silks are amazing, those play silks, because they could be so many things and we got a ton of use out of the, um, the play silks using different colors, blue for water, and it could also be a bandana, and it could be a dress, and it can be reins for a horse. So it's things like that where one toy can be used in many different ways. It's like giving your child a cardboard box, right? It becomes a fort or a house or, you know, a table and, and they get hours of fun out of playing with just basically a box. <laughs> so um, it doesn't have to be electric and flashing and music playing, nothing scary, rough, hard or plastic. 
All right, this is one of my favorite topics and that is rhythms and routines. So we're moving on to key number two. So rhythm and routine, you, know, you may have heard this term of rhythm and basically rhythm is just sort of your daily schedule and rituals that you perform over and over again, right? A, a routine is something that you, you routinely do. You do it again and again. So you might have a daily routine where you, you know you get up and you get dressed and you do the same things. And you know, you have to make dinner, you have to go shopping, you have school or whatever. You have the same basic things going on. And then you may have a weekly rhythm where one day you do the laundry, maybe the next day you go to the library for story time. Maybe on the you know, another day you have a, um, a like a play group or a co-op or something where you attend. So there's some week where you have to do errands that day. So there could be a weekly rhythm. There is a re weekly rhythm that, of things that you do. Like okay, on Tuesdays we do this. On on Fridays we do this. <laughs> so really setting up your days and schedules so that it it can, it really becomes a simple uh, a simple living because we want to not have a hurried lifestyle where we're running, constantly running around. If, if your child is in the car all day because you've got to run here and you've got to do this or you've got to take them here and there and you're shuffling them around, then their playtime is, is getting cut down into basically nothing. So not over scheduling, you know, keeping your environment clutter free and simple as possible, including your schedule. I remember the days where we had nothing to do. I would wake up and I thought, we don't have to go anywhere. I don't have anything I have to do. And those were the best days. We could just go out in the yard and play or go down to the beach or go to the park. And our kids could just play all day and I would watch them and, you know, interact with them. And it was, those were the most memorable days for us. Instead of like the days we had to shuffle off and do a bunch of errands and they're tired and cranky. Now I know you have things you have to do and that's not feasible to stay home every single day, but try to make it more that you're home more if possible, rather than running around. And if you do have errands on several different days, see if you can batch them together. And we used to do this one day, we would go to um, about 30 minutes, my girls had music lessons. And so we would have to go into town basically. And I tried to get everything done and do all the stops. It was a long day, but I, that saved me from having to go two or three times during that week. And we got it all done once. So I batched all my errands together if possible. Uh, let's see. So also simplifying their room, making sure their toys are not cluttered, making sure you don't have an overabundance of books and things strewn everywhere so that they can't find their stuff. Just like us, you know, it makes us, it makes me very nervous if I see big clutter everywhere and it just makes me feel like I can't find anything. But when I reorganize a room, you know, that feeling you get of, ah, oh, everything's in its place. I can see everything. It's not piled up in big piles where I forgot all about it. It's the same thing with your child's toys, keeping them in small baskets or bins where they can reach them and easily put them away is a lot easier than shoving them all into one big toy box where nothing can be found. All right, so let's talk a little bit more about daily and weekly rhythm. And this is really the mainstay of the Waldorf inspired life, in my opinion. And again, we talked a little bit about this, about having that daily and weekly flow. So basically setting up your days so that you have this in and out breath. So think of the tide as, you know, of the in and out, the ebb and the flow, and your days and weeks should go the same. And we talked kind of as we've already been talking here. So the in-breath is something where you kind of come together, like say story time or school lessons or something where you're coming in and that's sort of an in-breath if they're sitting for a while and working on a craft or an activity. And then the out-breath is like, let's go outside and run around or let's go take a walk. Let's kind of move. And the out-breath is sort of a out, right? It's sort of that okay, now let's get outside or let's just move and let's just, you know, get that energy out. So that's kind of a way to think of what's an in-breath activity versus an out-breath activity. And I'm sure you've seen this if your child has been in a very stimulating situation for a long time, they get overstimulated and it's like they're going, 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 and they cannot come down from it, right? And the same is true if they're sitting in the car or sitting for a long period of time and they're getting so antsy, they can't stand it, they have to get up and move. And even you probably have experienced that. So try to have a balance of your days 
where there's a little, there's an in-breath activity and then there's an out-breath activity. And then you come back in and you go out and just think about this tide and setting up your days in a way that it balances everything out so that your child is not exhausted or they're antsy. <laughs> and same with you, coming back together with them for story time and letting them go play by themselves for a little while, then coming back in to help you maybe prepare for dinner, you know, washing a vegetable or chopping or, um, you know, pretending to help um, setting the table or something like that. And then, um, you know, taking a walk after dinner or things like that. So I think that it's one of the very first things that I, I teach, um, when I'm helping someone get started with their homeschool is to get their rhythm in place. Because once you have the rhythm, um, it makes things so much easier. All of the days kind of flow better. You don't have to wonder what's coming up next. Your child doesn't have to wonder what's coming up next. And they really start to, it just helps so many. I can't even tell you the benefits for the mom <laughs> in discipline and just so that you don't have to like try to make things up every day. The routine becomes the way your life is, becomes what you do. And it's a lot easier than having to just make things up from scratch every single day. And it really moves right into what I was just saying because um, so many times if you've got different bedtimes, let's just say, or you do this different today and every day is different, your child doesn't know what to expect. And they feel that they um, there's no boundaries or nothing set. And then, you know, then you're yelling because they're not in bed and, and it becomes a very um, chaotic uh, feel. And children, again, like to feel secure. They like to feel that you know what you're doing and that you are in charge. And it's really important for this child of this age to have this. Even if you just are sort of faking it till you make it, it's okay. <laughs> it's not like I'm saying you have to be perfect. Nobody is and nobody has it all together. But if you just have a little bit of this rhythm going and create a nice daily rhythm. It really does help in so many ways. So you will find that when there is a strong rhythm to your days, that behavior challenges will totally decrease because things just become, well, this is the way they do it. They just know that when they get up, they're expected to get dressed and make their bed and come out for breakfast or whatever it is. Expect that we're gonna take a walk right before we do school. They expect that on Wednesdays we go to the library and then we come back. Like they just get to know the routine so they won't be pushing you and challenging you all the time because after a while they'll just come to expect it and they won't push, and especially with bedtime. There's less room for questioning, consistency and expectations are known, and it really creates a lot more peaceful atmosphere. It brings a more centered mom, which means more patience and less fighting. All right, let's move into key number three, which is artistic expression. And I know this is another big draw for you guys because who doesn't wanna make sure their children get the arts and the music that go along with Waldorf for sure. So let's talk about bringing the arts to your child. This is really the fun stuff and the beautiful things that you see on the Pinterest boards and the blogs and all of that, the painting, the crayon drawing, the beeswax modeling movement, singing, a blowing instrument when they're a little bit older. And honestly, storytelling, Waldorf is really, you know, it has this sort of foundation over here of, of what is expected and here's what you need to teach. But the, but the actual learning is all done through the arts, right? The vehicle for teaching in Waldorf is storytelling and painting and movement and singing. It's done through the arts and, and, and movement. So it's not, so it's not something that you can just say, oh, we don't want to do that part. <laughs> because it is, that's, that's all encompassing basically is understanding how to do all of those pieces. And your child learns through each and every piece there while they're painting, you know, while they're sculpting something with the beeswax modeling clay and while they're moving through circle time and doing the movement you know working on their small um, and large gross motor skills and you know just learning invitation to sing songs back memory so many things <laughs> uh, come from the arts that um, it's just you know I'm sure you can look up any of this too again about arts on young children and that whole Mozart effect or whatever it's called where you know it really does create connections in their brain 
that later on help math and reading and all of those academics. So if you want to help your, you know, if you really want to help your child with having, you know, being smarter and, and doing well in later years and going to college and all of that, then expose them to as much music and arts and movement as you can because those connections are made in those early years that they will, you know, again, they will, it's our springboard to later academics. All right, celebrating the festivals. Another beautiful thing that I love um, that has to do, especially with the younger child. Here's a picture of my girls when we did a May Day festival and they did, um, we had a little tree that we decorated as our maypole and they danced around the maypole. So really understanding what a festival is and the reason why we celebrate it, right? It's not something that's just, um, oh, here's the day and here's what we do. Like really getting to know the festivals um, is a is another piece of, of Waldorf and you know you don't have to feel like you have to do every festival you can pick and choose the ones that resonate with you um, you cannot do them if you want but I think you'll be missing out because some of these are some really um, became a real solid part of our year and really getting that connection with the rhythm of life and the seasons and it, it feels weird if we just don't do it. And now my kids are, are older and they're like, we're not going to skip around the maple. <laughs> and they don't want to, you know, bake dragon bread anymore for Michaelmas. But we still, I try to bring as much as possible. We still have a few um, things that we do. And I feel that if I don't do it, like I'm sort of missing out myself. I still have a nature table. I'm basically looking over at my nature, nature table right now, all set for spring. <laughs> and, um, but these are some beautiful times of really bringing, you know, rituals of things that maybe that people have been doing for thousands of years and passing them down and really getting that connection or just celebrating the seasons, the, the, the renewal of spring and life coming back and how, you know, getting them to understand that now the earth is going to sleep, you know, during the winter and, and how life, um, you know, kind of goes through those cycles. To me, that's very important. And, um, really becomes again part of that foundation circle time <laughs> another amazing um, thing we talked I talked a little bit about this was a big issue when I got started I don't know why but I could not grasp what this was supposed to look like did we have to send in a circle how long should it be how many songs do we do and I, I think I had no idea and I remember doing like 45 minutes and I'm wondering while my kids were um, you know like trying to creep away and getting very bored when they were like four, three or four years old. So it's really much less complicated than we make it. But to me, this is the heart of the homeschool, especially during the early years, because you're not doing official lessons yet, right? Not till first grade. So um, if, if you've got a child three, four, five, and six years old, a lot of learning is done through circle time. And I don't want you to just think it's just a time for fun songs, though that is a big part of it. It is about having fun, but they are learning. Like I said, they're learning to imitate. They're using their memories. Um, and it really sets you up to transition into the grade. Um, it gives you a place to use movement and seasonal songs. We, list, we learned verses where we were, again, they're learning their memory, their thinking. Um, doing some brain games and just having a lot of fun and it also is about bringing the polarities which I talked about early that start and stop up down left right We're, they're learning all is loud and soft and all those crossing the midline exercises that can be done again these children are learning through their body and that's what they're working on their limbs so circle time is the ideal place to do a lot of that in a little bit more, um, you know, structured way and a lot and a lot of fun. All right, let's move on to the fourth key, which is the seasonal curriculum. So I really like having a structure to your day. And I think that a lot of times moms at this age, you know, especially that four to five and six they're kind of like, what do I do? I feel like I'm not doing enough. You know, my neighbors down the street, their kids are going off to school and they're learning to write and, and all of this. And we feel like we're not doing enough. But I think that's why having some kind of a guide or some kind of a, um, a curriculum to follow can really help you feel like you're doing enough. You know, you don't really have to do, you know, your child doesn't officially have to do anything. 
And when I created School for All Seasons, it was for, it's for the moms and for the spouses who are kind of like, I don't think our child is getting enough, you know, and, and you starting to second guess, maybe I should be doing more, should I start my letters and all of that? The answer is no, but it is nice to have something to follow and to fall back on when you're like, what do we do all day? <laughs> because by the time they get into those upper years, like five and six, you're kind of like, what do we do? I feel like I need something to do with them. So storytelling is the, is the backbone of, the, of Waldorf education, like I was saying. And what does that mean? You know, it, of course, you know, reading books, hopefully you've already been doing that, but this is not the same as reading books. Storytelling is just telling a story from your brain, <laughs> you know, like not reading, but actually just telling the story the way you want to tell it. And that is really a big part as you move into the grades with Waldorf, all of the stories are told through you and are until you get later on where, you know, children are starting to read on their own, but the early years are all done through stories and kids I love it. I was kind of like, what's the difference? Why can't I just read a book versus tell a story? And I remember the first time I tried it and I thought, well, I'm just going to give it a go. And I just started telling a story, but you know, you get to look at their expressions and you get to watch what they're, you know, what they're doing. And it's amazing to watch a young child when you tell a story, you know, their eyes get really big and especially, you know, a, a, the big giant is coming in and the princess was running away or whatever. And, you know, watch their eyes and you can see if they're starting to get a little bit bored or, um, you know, if they're excited, you can always add things and they want to hear it told your way. You don't have to worry about memorizing the story. It's not about memorizing the story, but it's basically about retelling it in your own words. Okay. Um, crafts. Oh, puppet show. I want to talk briefly about puppet show here. I kept hearing about these puppet shows, puppet shows. What is a puppet show? And I remember the first time I saw a puppet show, I was thinking, you know, these marionettes or puppets and things like that. And I thought, this sounds really complicated. I'm sure I won't be able to do that. <laughs> and then I saw this Waldorf inspired puppet show and they were just using little wooden toys, basically little wooden animals or gnomes. Um, and you know, just using them as props. And in my um, school for all seasons, I have a storytelling video of me telling a short story. I think it's just a few minutes, but I am actually acting it out so that you can see how it goes. I set up the whole thing with the you know with the, the play silks and all of the scenery, and it really just takes a few minutes. And the kids absolutely love it. They absolutely love it. So I, if you can do that, I, I highly recommend. All right, let's move on to crafts. So during these early years, crafting becomes your handwork, right? They're, they're a little too young to be knitting and doing some of those really, um, you know, you, they can do some painting again, but some of that, those beautiful things that you see on the boards and, and Pinterest boards and things don't come into play until your child is a little bit older, seven, eight, nine, ten. So what can you do with your younger child? Well, crafts is an amazing thing, of course. You can use stories as your themes and you can bring crafts that go along with these stories and projects to complement the stories because it really helps your child learn deeper. So if you're you know, doing a story about blueberries, well, you can go pick blueberries and then you can take the blueberries and you can make you know, blueberry pancakes or you could take the blueberries and you know, make um, a craft with blueberries and put them on the paper. Like there's so many things that could be done and it really extends the story and helps them learn, in, you know, learn deeper as you're going through these um, themes. All right, nature and outdoors. Again, I talked earlier about the importance. It really is of the utmost importance to let your child play outdoors and create a connection with nature, the seasons, learn to care for the earth. So there's, this can be done in so many ways, like a garden, you know, giving them a little pot of flowers or a little piece of a garden to tend to, observing animals and plants and local um, you know, animals around squirrels and bunnies or going to a zoo or something or like an outdoor zoo where they can see nat animals in their natural habitat, right? We need to connect, we need to create this connection and children are losing this because they're just in school so much. They don't have the opportunity to be outdoors and create this connection. Thus, they don't care, right? They don't have that care for the earth and care for the animals. But if they're out there and they are experiencing it, then they will care. And so this is a big part of this early childhood of, of really connecting with nature and the outdoors. Okay, great. So here's another 
success story from another mom that said, Donna, help me find the natural steps I could take to begin our homeschooling journey with confidence. And I think that's a big thing that, that we're lacking, especially when you're just getting started and no one can blame you. Am I doing it right? You know, I don't want to mess my kids up. I, what if I do something wrong? You know, it's about that confidence to, to move forward and having something there to guide you and lead you through the steps kind of gives you that confidence because you know you're on the right track. So here are the five common mistakes that moms make when they're just getting started. And you, you know, I don't want you to have to make these. <laughs> so that's what I, we're going to try to go through this so that you can avoid them. I really made so many mistakes when I got started because I had no training and no one to ask. But once I did have that, once I went through the training and understood what I was supposed to be doing, then I was like a light bulb went off. Oh, it's not that hard. You just have to know how to put it all together. It's like a big puzzle. And no matter how you try, you can't put the pieces in until someone shows you what the picture is supposed to look like. You know what I'm saying here? Okay, so not having a step-by-step -step plan um, is one of the most common things like winging it, you know, just kind of making it up as you go. I mean, that can work to a point, but like I said, by the time your child's five and six, they're kind of looking at you like we're not doing anything. It's the same every day. And you, and you start to wonder, Hey, this can't be all there is. <laughs> right. All right. So mistake number two is trying to learn it all at one time. Yeah, that's another big thing. Oh, I'll just spend the weekend looking through all this stuff and trying to bring it all in and really making a whole bunch of changes to your rhythm and you know, throwing out plastic toys and doing everything all at once is really hard. And it's a lot easier to take it step by step and do it the right, in the right order and giving, your, you know, giving yourself a little time to settle into this. It's not something... This isn't an overnight thing where you just watch a video and tomorrow you, uh, you get it. That's why I call it Waldorf living and learning because it becomes a lifestyle. And even as good as you can be and as much as you could learn, it's still you have to have it settle in and become part of your life. And that's going to take some time no matter what. All right, mistake number three is not understanding the whys behind the magic. And this could be just, what I mean by this is just like looking, oh, there's some pretty paintings, let's paint like that, or not really understanding why you're doing what you're doing. I don't know if this affects you like it affects me, but I need to know why. Like if I'm gonna do, you know, keep my child away from media, or I'm gonna do this, or I'm gonna do that, or I'm gonna wait until they're seven, until I start teaching them their letters, then I need to know why. And then once I understand that, oh, okay, great. It becomes something that, yes, I agree with that. That makes all the sense in the world, of course. So I will help do that. And this can come, this can be a real problem if you don't understand what you're doing, especially when you have a spouse or a family member who's kind of not on board with what you're doing or a lot of times we have teachers in the family and I apologize if any of you are teachers they seem to be some of the hardest ones to kind of untrain. <laughs> and like, what do you mean? They're only gonna be doing this and they're, only, they're not gonna be doing school for hours a day or whatever it might be. So you have, to be the, you have to have confidence and you need to know how to explain what you're doing. If you don't, you can start to be second guessing what you're doing and then um, you know, maybe I'm not doing, maybe we should do more and all of that. So I want you to be able to feel confident and say, okay, great. I know that I've got this covered and this is the right way to do it. So um, mistake number four is info, info gathering junkie. You can spend a lot of money buying every resource, every book, every whatever that's out there. And I did do this. I remember having a table full of just books and stuff. And I thought, oh my gosh, what am I supposed to do with all this? This book said to do this and this one said to do that and it becomes overwhelmed. So, you know, hoarding resources and gathering more and more and more and more, but actually not implementing or doing anything um, isn't going to get you anywhere except for super confused, and I'm afraid you may even just throw in the towel and say, this is way too complicated, I can't do this. So if you're looking, you know, that next book might be the thing, or that next whatever might be the thing, um, you just need someone who's been there, done that, and can walk you through the steps and who knows how to take you 
down that path step by step in a practical way to really you know shine the light on here's what here's the thing you need to be doing right now you don't need to be learning about that yet because your child is three so you know a lot of times moms want to jump into planning and curriculum and all kinds of things and like they haven't gotten their the foundations in place yet all right and then the last is trying to do it all by yourself and wasting energy so let's just think about this Waldorf teachers aren't thrown into a classroom before going through like four years of training and then they have um, you know they have to do like uh, like a student teacher kind of a thing and all of that when we get a new job we're just not thrown out there or some and expected to just figure it out right and it's the same thing here I don't know why moms think they should be able to just figure this out all on their own it's sort of like that parenting this is it, this doesn't necessarily come you know naturally to some people and it's not even about that it's just understanding making sure you understand what you're doing and then once you have it you have it and you're good to go I'm not talking about you have to study and you've got to learn you've got to take teacher training for five years or anything like that but you do need some basics um, if you want to you know make this work effectively and no one would expect you otherwise to just be thrown in and go okay great try to figure it out you know and you're just kind of standing there and it's, it takes so much more energy to, one, try to figure it out, and then, two, have to go teach it. If you could totally erase the first part, you're saving yourself 50%, okay? 50% of your energy can, instead of going, oh, first I have to figure out how to do it, now I have to go over here and do it. Instead, you can just do it and let go, okay, great, now I know how to do it, I can just do it. And I know you're, you know, you're busy, you've got other things happening in your life. You may have more than one child. You probably do. You may have a baby. You have a household to run. So the last thing you need to do is add a whole bunch more to your plate. Now I have to figure out how to do this homeschooling thing. So um, here's another case study. I am thankful to have Donna's training at the early stages of my child's education. I recommend it to anyone considering homeschooling. So again, you don't have to do it all on your own. You can just you know, kind of take what I've already put together and, and move forward with it. And it's a lot easier and it's a lot faster and a lot more joyful and happy rather than being struggling and overwhelming. So if your head is spinning right now, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> most likely you might be like, yes, I want all of this. I love all these pieces. It makes sense. I want this holistic living and learning, but I just, you know, and all the pieces I talked about, you're like arts. Yes. Outdoors. Yes. Seasons, festivals. Yes. Rhythm. All of that sounds really great. Um, but again, it might be like, how do I put it all together? How do I make that puzzle come together and really grasp all of the concepts? Um, how do you do it, right? How do I make it all work? And in fact, I know that is one of the things because in my survey, those were the top concerns that I'm just so busy. I'm way too busy to do, try to figure it out. I really want to do this, but I don't know if I can grasp all the concepts and art, hands on artistic components. Um, you know, I just don't know. So I get it. Those are all valid concerns and I hear them all the time from my community. And so that's really why I created, that's why I have a plan here. I really. Um, took all of that guesswork and overwhelm out of it and really put it all into the school for all season. So at this point, I'm really excited to, to really introduce you to my school for all seasons package. So the five amazing things that school for all seasons offers is gently timed academics, really letting your child experience childhood that we talked about earlier, a natural holistic education of their body, mind, and spirit, exposure to the arts, music, and movement, and enhanced environment allowing your child to thrive. And time-saving teaching, how to follow the steps with confidence so that you don't have to try to figure it all out. You can just leave that stress behind and just go do it. So this program includes three areas of learning. And I think all three are very important. The behind the scenes philosophy, right? I want you to understand why and how it works and why we're doing it. 
And you may have seen some of this, but I put it, I do it in very simple to understand terms. I'm, I'm really good. One of my genius is to take something complicated and kind of bring it down so that you can understand it. Also, how to do video, how to video tutorials. I'm a very visual person and I love to see things um, visually and I can go, oh, I get it. <laughs> and then examples and ideas to make it fit your life. I'm all about practical examples like, okay, that all sounds really good, but how is that going to work in my own home? when I have two kids or, and a, you know, and a baby. <laughs> so this is all about practical. It's about how to, and it's about understanding the Waldorf philosophy so that you understand what you're doing. So here is school for all seasons. And it comes with some training modules because I don't expect that you're just going to know this, right? So I walk you through these training modules so that you will get it. And basically module one is creating that foundation for your own child. We talk about child development. We learn about those that seven-year cycle and how your child unfolds so that you can foster their development and understand the stages they're in. Like I said, for parenting, for teaching, and just communicating with your child, it's like a light bulb goes off when you understand where they are and how you can um, you know, foster that. We'll talk about toys and creative play, the best natural and open-ended toys, how to set up the indoor and outdoor play, your environment, how to create that nourishing environment, that setting so that they can thrive, and how the how-to video for module one is using block crayons. I will actually show you how to take those thick square crayons <laughs> and use them. We had them sitting around here for years until I finally figured out what to do with them. So you don't have to have that. Module two is all about daily schedules and rhythm. This is so important. I wanna make sure that you get your daily and weekly rhythm set up and how to do it with a preschooler because it's different than doing it with a grades age child. You know, you've got a little toddler and a preschooler running around. So we're gonna set it up so it fits that. Um, create room for connection with simple living and how to help discipline your child with love and respect. And the how-to video for module two is wet on wet painting tutorial. I'm gonna take you through the steps of doing how to do that wet on wet painting for your age child. Module three, artistic expression and circle. This is that we're, we're gonna bring those Waldorf arts to your child. Learn to sprinkle the festivals for connection and rituals and seasons. How to create an engaging circle time that your child will love. I know that's a huge one for you. And this program comes with done for you circle time I'll talk about in just a minute. Your how-to video is the circle. You're gonna see me and my girls doing an actual whole circle time from beginning to end so you can see how it goes. Of course, everyone's will be different, but this will give you a springboard of where to start, how it could look, and then you can take what you'd like and use it yourself. Module four is the seasonal, about using the seasonal curriculum. I'm gonna talk about storytelling, how easy it is to do storytelling. You don't have to worry about that. I'll show you how to use props for puppet shows, how to create a nature table to bring the outdoors inside, and how to use the seasonal curriculum with your preschooler. And this module's um, video is a storytelling. I think I said that earlier. There's a video of me doing an entire story with props, little animals and gnomes or something um, with all things right there so you can see how it looks so that you can go, this is really not that hard and I can do it too. Okay, transcripts of all the training modules come in this because I know sometimes some of you just like to read through it and highlight and, and make notes so you could quickly go back and access any of it so you'll get all the transcripts and the big piece here is you get the complete 10-month nature curriculum so this is not just a training class but you actually get the september through may weekly themed lessons that come with this and there's a bonus summer month that i've added in for you so it's really like 10 months um, it, each week is a theme and comes with the stories, ideas for extra books if you want to add to it, activities, outdoor activities, recipes. Um, it's a four day a week um, lesson. So there's four days in your lesson. You take Friday off or whatever. For this young child, you don't need to be doing school every day by any means. It comes uh, with a done for you circle time, autumn, winter, and spring, a very simple circle. I've got the verses, I've got the finger plays and the songs. You get the songs 
um, on MP3. So you can just listen to me sing them and then you can learn them to, you know, very simple songs. And then you can add, if you want to add to it, this is just a great starting point. Um, all done. You don't have to try to collect and figure out what I'm supposed to do for circle. It's all done for you. And then of course, um, your seasonal curriculum right there, you're going to have the whole thing ready to go. It comes with the video tutorials, the wet and wet painting tutorial, the circle time tutorial, the storytelling puppet show, and the block crayon tutorial where I will show you, you know, step by step as we walk through each stage and you can go back and watch these as many times as you want. It comes with so many templates and PDF worksheets. Each module has templates and worksheets and exercises that go with it. There's some toy resources, the three bodies, um, and of course, an overview of the curriculum, and there's just so many in each one, but you get all of that. There's Facebook group support. So everyone who buys my curriculum, first grade and the School for All Seasons comes into a Facebook group where you can come ask questions, chat with other people. I'm there to help you if you get stuck in some way and you can ask what other people are doing. So you don't, you get that extra support just as a, an extra bonus. So the School for All Season package includes the four training modules that I talked about, the MP3 recordings of those on setting up your school, your rhythm, and using the curriculum guide. You get all the PDF worksheets, templates, transcripts. You get the complete 10-month seasonal curriculum, the week-by-week -week theme, lessons, activities. All the stories are in there, included in the back of the book. Every story is in there, except for the, like, there's some books that I recommend that you can get from the library, but the actual weekly stories are in there. Plus, you get the bonus summer month, the how-to video tutorials on storytelling, circle time, drawing, and wet painting, and the done-for-you circle winter, spring, and autumn, plus bonus there's an extra MP3 in there and the, you get a whole printout of the verses and the Facebook group for your curriculum discussion. And of course, I want to make it even better because <laughs> I want to give you everything I can. So I brought out some other bonus audios and PDFs that will help you. You get parenting with love, making empathy work in your home because I know that parenting is a really big part of homeschooling that we may not think of because you're there with your child 24 seven. And if you are having some parenting issues, it's going to be really hard to homeschool. So I included parenting with love, which is an amazing, um, audio training. Also media and pop culture. Here is a great one that I know you'll be able to use some tips on trying to, you know, you know, get media out of your child's life if you've already exposed them to it and ways to, um, you know, do it with, um, boundaries, um, folk tale and fairy tales for different ages. This is a great PDF. Like what's appropriate for your child at certain ages and they're done by Adrian, like three and four and then five and six and that kind of thing. So you'll have which ones are good for those age ranges. I have age appropriate chores PDF that you can help bring your child in and help them start doing some purposeful work and invitation through chores. And you get my festival guide on how to do festivals. Like here's the way I, I do the festivals. So you can take what you like and then take it or use it or don't. But I have everything in there, all the festivals, how we've done them. So you have a place to start. Okay, great. So I also have two options. If you want to purchase the digital copy, when you go to the School for All Seasons package, um, page like this the info page there are two options you can get just the digital copy which of course will save you a little bit it comes all all of it's in pdf and mp3 or if you like a hard copy we've recently started offering a hard copy version because so many people like to have that in their hand and look through it and i totally get it <laughs> you can buy the hard copy and you will still get all of the other stuff um, in your portal, all of the trainings and all everything else and all of the PDFs, bonus PDFs will come over there, but the actual curriculum will come in hard copy and it will be shipped out to you and you'll receive that um, in a few days after we get that set for you. Okay, now I'm going to stop for a moment and just come on over here and do a, um, a little um, questions. And while I do, let me give you the page because I don't have the link here <laughs> if you're interested. <laughs> It is the WaldorfConnection.com forward slash 
SFAS, that's for School for All Seasons package, so FSAS package. And we have a special webinar price going on right now. If you're interested and want to take advantage of it, it's going on for about 48 hours. I'm giving you a special discount. Check out the price over there. Um, it really comes with so much. And we really, when I did this class, live several years ago, it was $497. And so the price is like a fraction of that, that you're able to get the whole package. And I've really added a lot more to it since we did it live. So let me come on over. I'm going to stop sharing and oops, stop share and pop on over and see if there's any questions. Let me record this moment. Okay. Um, let me find it here. Sorry, I'm stuck here with, um, where is my, where are you? <laughs> Let me find you. Um, uh, where is my, no, I don't want my tunes. Oh, I have to turn the, what I'm looking for is the, uh, back to meeting, here we go. Well, I can't seem to find the questions here. I can't get back to you. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> uh, Video settings. Here we go. Let's see if this will work. Okay, great. I'm on. <laughs> All right. There we go. I couldn't find it. I'm sorry. It got stuck here. So I'm trying to go back to the chat to see if we have any questions, but I'm still actually not finding the right chat for this. Oh, here we go. Found it. So if you have any questions about the program, um, about what we've been talking about, feel free to go ahead and type over there in the chat. Underneath my video, there should be a little box that says chat. Feel free to type in a question. I'm gonna put right here, put questions here. Uh, see if you have anything here, if you have any questions. Okay, Amy is asking um, about downloading the materials. Yes, you'll have lifetime access to all of the materials. So whether you, are, you know, want to look at it all now, and then you want to look at it again in six months, whenever you have all of your stuff downloaded, you know, it'll be all in your portal and you'll have lifetime access to it. And if I do any updates or add anything to it, which I usually do, I kind of polish things up and add more things, then you will get any new things um, that I add into the mix there um, just by, you know, have purchasing the whole package. So um, yes, it comes with all of it, everything that I just said. So not only just the 10 month curriculum, it comes with all those training modules, it comes with the done for you circle time, it comes with all the stories, it comes with the videos, it comes with everything because I don't wanna just give you a curriculum and say, here you go, but I wanna show you how to use it and how best to set up your homeschool for these early years so that it, it's a little different than when you do it when you've got a seven, eight, nine year old because you aren't actually teaching academics but this is a great way to get your homeschool set up. And then when you do move into transitioning over to the grades, it goes so smooth, it's unbelievable. You have your rhythm working, you have your circle time, and then you do your story and activity. You just basically um, substitute in main lesson when you start to, when you get into first grade. So it's a great way to get things rolling and get the rhythm going so that your child is used to it. So when it's time to really move up into the grades, they already know what to expect. Again, having that rhythm so that they really get what they're doing and understand how it all flows. Um, okay, anybody else have anything over here for questions for me? Uh, about anything we talked about or about the course. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the link in here so that you can pop over and take a look and it lists you can go to this link there you go 
you can go to that link and it will give you, you know, everything. It lists out everything uh, that's included and it gives you the special webinar price um, that's good for the next 48 hours. So I don't want you to miss that price. So um, if you're like, great, I'm, I'm thinking about, you know, I'm, I've got to get things together to homeschool for the upcoming year. And I had no idea what I was going to do with my preschooler, or my kindergarten age child. This is a perfect way to have a structure, to have something in place uh, without, you know, bringing the, the, the stress of, or that academics, but having a structure for you so that you can follow something and have something there in place to keep you on track and to keep things rolling for them so that they are, and they will totally be learning through all of the things that you are bringing to them through School for All Seasons. A lot of great activities, crafts, songs, stories, all the things we talked about that are so important to that zero to seven age. All right, let me go over here and check any last questions. I don't want to keep going too long. I want to keep your time and, and I know you're busy and, and, and I want to, Keep an eye on that for you. Um, if you do have any questions later, you can always email me at support at the waldorfconnection.com. We've had hundreds of people um, go through this program with a lot of success, and it really is nice to have something to um, keep you um, on track during these early years. So I don't see any more questions, so I'm going to go ahead and sign off. Feel free to email me with any questions, and um, good luck with. Um, homeschooling your and bringing Waldorf learning and living to your young child. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye.